Hey guys, welcome back. Too many projects, not enough time. I'm Andrew, and uh, it's been a busy summer, even though I haven't uh, really posted anything up, but I will be posting some stuff uh, more and more now as the end of the summer comes along and we get back into projects and actually stuff I think you may be interested in. Anyway, recently on vacation with the family uh, in a farmer's field across the river from where we were uh, at a campsite, there was a big, uh, like, aircraft wartime belly tank that was set up like a big bomb and uh, it was on a pivot as a uh, wind vane and it was big it was really cool so it gave me this idea of um, putting a wind vane up at the lake on the on the waterfront area there and I thought well what could you use besides a, um, a bomb looking uh, belly tank fuel belly tank from an, an old warplane well a big canoe so what we have here is a 14-foot uh, canoe and uh, we're going to put this up on top of about a 10-foot post and um, have it spin and articulate to follow the wind. It does have the flat back on it. Sorry for the traffic noise here, we're back in the city. Um, and uh, so it's got the back here for an outboard motor. So unless I can find a lightweight old vintage one that's no longer working uh, to put on the back here, I'm just going to make a plywood uh, outboard as more of a little bit of a wind catch and directional uh, flap for it on the back, I guess. And um, so I'm going to have to put a, uh, because it snows a lot up there at the lake, this is going to be a big snow bucket in the winter. So. Um, I am going to have to reinforce this pretty well, so I got a couple of uh, 24 inch by 6 inch quarter inch thick plates. I'm going to sandwich the canoe uh, in the middle here, uh, plus a bunch of uh, bracing to a center point. And front and back, I have eyelets in the bottoms down here and at the front. Uh, there will be a cable kind of holding up either end as well off the center pivot point. The pivot point will use the end of an old axle. Um, that's the basic gist of it. So it shouldn't be a huge project, it should be a fairly quick one. I googled this on the internet looking for a real life size canoe wind vane and there's nothing. So let's make it happen and uh, put some pictures on the internet. If you ever google that you will find pictures of this. So uh, let's start cutting, grinding and welding and uh, reinforce this quite a lot so that once she fills with snow in the winter she's not going to fall down or collapse and uh, it'll last quite a number of years. Thanks for coming along guys, appreciate your uh, your time and watching me build stuff. Um, well, we're making slow progress on Ivy, we've got the uh, the box machine, there was a hiccup there so it's been corrected and now we're just waiting for some parts to come in to get that transfer case built and then so once it gets colder and raining and miserable here and I'm back in the shop, uh, we'll be getting back onto Ivy and um, but we've got a bunch of more projects and uh, up at the lake to do here in the fall outside stuff and some really neat stuff that uh, will be on a, a video either well depending on how long this takes either you'll see those videos uh, before this one or after this one and um, let's just say they're a large project it shouldn't oh, yeah, another large project all right guys Let's start uh, building all the bracketing to, uh, to get this up on a pole. Okay, so first up, we've got this old, I guess, end of an axle off an old trailer. It's got this, it's got this uh, horn on the end, um, I guess with a little bit of a droop when it was mounted. So, uh, we're gonna cut this off. And I think the plan, this fits inside my uh, 10, 12 foot post. So we're going to weld this to this to this plate, I think. And then this plate to the axle. That way there's no water going down the pole. Or maybe that doesn't matter. First we're going to cut this off and then, uh, then make a plan from there. Alrighty folks, we've got that chunk off the end, and we are left with that. So, I think it's going to be too much to take this rest of this chunk off. 
I think we're just going to weld that straight to there. And any water that does get down inside the post, the bottom of the post is open. It just falls right out. Shall we begin? This is not a drill.
Well, guys, there we have it. We got uh, the pivot base uh, welded up and assembled and in. And um, now all the inside supports here are uh, bracing it all as well. Because uh, remember, this is going to be. Um, excuse the truck going by. Um, this will be up north in the snow and will be uh, full of snow and ice throughout the winter. So I'm hoping I've over, over engineered it. Now I have a couple of 3 16 holes here and we have some 3 16 cable that will go down to the turn buckles on either end, low down in the canoe, and um, that'll come back up over the center point. Um, we will have a little uh, outboard on the back. Um, so this cable angling down to the very lowest point should also add additional support uh, to the very front and the very um, back, the very bow and stern of the canoe. So um, we're going to wrap up this video here. Thanks for watching to the end. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to do one more video and get this thing up in the air. The next video we're going to do um, the mounting base and then follow it up by um, giving it a quick lick of paint once we're up at the lake and um, getting it hoisted into the air and then I'll watch it spin with the wind. Uh, so thanks for uh, watching this first video and there is going to be a second follow-up video of installing it as well as how the uh, base is going to work out as well on the ground to support this about 10 feet off the ground. Thanks guys, have a great one, see you next time.